I keep on moving forward Always getting closer March until it's over Until he finally shut him up Yeah So to speak And you know And that was Again one of the coolest things I ever saw was You know the last race I ever got to do with Ryan Was at Mammoth Mountain And I he almost beat McGrath. It was oh. like McGrath just barely got him at the end, you know, but it was like, I was just, this guy's going to be something, you know, he's, yeah. he's going to be there. And, and, well, and obviously McGrath's like the king. Of right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, like well, how old he is. Yeah. He's still like killing it. Well, and that, and that was the thing. And, and he's got a knee replacement too. Right? <laughs> he's still doing knack knacks. Yeah. The knee replacement, but the so. funny thing was, as I remember somebody telling, and I don't remember who it was, but they're like, they're like, you're going to get McGrath in the beginning, but, and I remember it was 10 laps, and he's like, laps 7, 8, 9, and 10, McGrath's really going to turn it up. And he got Ryan, I think, the last lap. And it was just like, yeah, you know, and it was it was so cool to watch. It was so cool to see. It was super fun to be a part of. But, you know, Ryan, you know, Ryan outgrew me. I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't uh, keep up that pace with him. He was just, he was phenomenal. And, um, you know, and then after that, I, w I went to work for, for Daniel Blair when he was still doing arena cross and some mm -hmm. super cross stuff and had a great time working with Daniel. I feel like me and Daniel were like the most fit cause we're kind of very close in yeah. age. Uh, you know, he was married and didn't have kids yeah. at the time, but you know, he was working a full-time job. I was working a full-time job. We were racing on the weekends and we were Banos. having a, yeah, yeah. Banos, yeah, uh, Banos. West coast Supercross. We did yeah. a lot of the arena cross series together. Uh, you know, and, and Daniel, you know, Daniel was super, and Vince both were, you know, super fun to be around. Yeah. They're, they're in their band at the time, and we're doing our shows. And, they were living the dream. Oh, yeah. Like it was, band, yeah. Racing, yeah. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, and, and at the time, for me, like, that was, that was my, that was where I was, you know, and yeah. I was like, yeah, I could wrench on dirt bikes, but I also want to, I wanted to go out and I wanted to see them play their rock shows, and we wanted to go to all yeah. these, you know, fun races and stuff like that, and, and, um, you know, I had a great time with that, and then, you forced me into law enforcement for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I quit racing. I broke my femur, blew my knee out, and then the recession hit. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time to go get a job. And, you know, then me and my wife ended up getting married. And you were talking about it. You're like, yeah, wrenching's cool, but I need something a little more stable, right? Yeah. And then, so, yeah, you went on a couple ride-alongs. And then uh, next thing you know, Matt, yeah. Matt's a, 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 <laughs> yeah. a deputy here. And then now you're a sergeant here. Yeah. And you've got a good career. So, you know, and then that's the career I got into, and you know, hey, there is a little bit of life after motocross, right? Right. So. right. Yeah. No, it was, and like I said, it was. Uh, I had a great time. I met a lot of really cool people. I got to spend the time around a lot of very cool people, and I got to see kind of how that sport really yeah. works out, um, from the top levels all the way down. You know, um, I think the biggest thing that I see nowadays is is um, there's too much distraction out there for younger yeah. guys. I mean, when you're expected to be pro by 16 or 17 and you get guys like jet lawrence mm -hmm. out there who's you know 17 years old and he's killing it you know those put super high expectations for a lot of yeah. guys and then you know it, it it's every year it seems like we're getting a couple a couple of really fast guys that you've never heard of that are, you know levi kitchens you yeah. know he kind of came out of nowhere and and he's flying and you know I, I i the biggest thing for for people that i see is they need to have that mindset where they can't have any other distractions you know you, you got to do your homes if you're homeschooled then that's that's a huge step right there because you're having more time to go out and train and ride uh, if you're not it's it's keeping that you know the distractions away you know it, it's you yeah. know it, it's ryan put all those on the back burner to have fun later on in life and you know and look at i mean he's He's been been gone for five or six years, and now he's coming back to race pro again. I, I think he's still going to be up. Oh yeah, and I, no doubt in my mind. You know, I I just from what yeah. I know of the guy, he's going to come back strong, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah. I think it's going to take him a little bit to. I hope I'm. I hope I have to eat these words right now. I, I don't. I don't think he's going to win right away. But <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I hope I eat right. these words. But yeah. you know, it's it's hard to come back to the to the top i mean eli yeah. tomac is insane jason anderson's insane yeah. but you know dylan ferrandis is insane outdoors yeah. and he's you know they're not going to give it up easy but no. ryan ryan's gonna be there he's gonna be a top five guy for sure yeah that's what that's that's kind of what i was thinking too yeah so yeah it, like you're talking about distractions i i think you know like i was saying social media is a bit blessing huge. and a curse yeah because like what i find now is like when kids should be out pounding motos mm -hmm. you know they should be out doing motos and focusing on technique 
they're worried about getting camera phone shots of them throwing a whip with a big jump, right? right? And they'll, they'll be like, oh, how's that one? Oh, you're a little bit out of frame. So then they spend, you know, they got three hours to ride, but they're spending an hour and 45 minutes trying to get something to put on reels, which right. I get it because you want to get the, the... Right, it's exposure. The exposure and people to watch you, but it's like you need to go to, tra- to the track with a plan, right? Like, right. yeah, you can post as many reels as you want, but you're probably not going to be an Instagram influencer. You're a motocross racer, right? right? Like, try to minimize your time on promoting yourself as much and focus on the, right. the stuff that matters, right? Like, if, if you're promoting yourself takes over your progression as it being a writer, that's going to hurt you, right? Right, And you can get just bogged down with like, okay, I got to post on Twitter. I got to post on Instagram. I got to post on Facebook. I got to make reels. I got to do this. I got to do that, right? Like, there's so many things you have to do. It's like, Focus on the riding, have somebody, dude, just take videos of you motoring, right? right? Like, instead of throwing a big fat whip over a jump, like, yeah, it looks cool. Dude, just have them take little right. snips of you just railing corners, right? right? Do, the, do those at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, get, get, get your get your training and your workout in first, and yep. then throw whips at the end of the day to yeah. finish off the day, a good day of riding, you exactly. know? Exactly. Like, um, do the work first. Right. Work comes first, play second. Right. And, you know, for me, starts. Starts are always number one. Yeah. If you're not practicing your starts every day, you're hurting yourself. Because yeah. how many times have you seen it? You get up front, you 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 ride up front, and you're like, all right, cool. And you you tend to end up finishing mm-hmm. somewhere up front. Yeah. You know, you start in the back of the middle, back of the pack. You you might pass a few guys That's... here or there, unless you're a superstar and you're blowing people's doors off. But you you tend to ride mm-hmm. in the back. You start out up front and you crash and you fall back. It's amazing that you can charge back up to the front because you know you're supposed to be up there. You know where you're supposed to be. Right, you know where you're supposed to be. But, you know, the biggest thing is your conditioning and your starts because, you know, there's a lot of tracks where it turns into a lot of one line. And if you're not out front and you're in the back of the pack, by the end of the first lap, you're already 15, 20 seconds down. Exactly. That's I ran into that with Colby Kopp in the Supercross. And I mean, he did great. He improved a ton. But yeah he would have you know he qualified 21st at one of them and then he gets a bad start in 14 15 with a guy that qualified 39th right but then you get sucked into their pace because yeah. the the supercross tracks are hard to pass right yeah and then if somebody's you know doubling the rhythm and ju- jumping from left to right to left to right by the first lap like you said you're already 15 seconds down. yeah so it's like you can go out pound motos you know do all that stuff but if you don't have starts down right like dude figure out the starts right, right? like that's half the race if not yeah more. go go watch a bunch of michael lessey videos yeah something i mean the dude you know or vince yeah. freeze is as yeah. much as you know I, I don't care for his riding style the guy's an amazing starter i and remember at one of the rounds colby colby had a there was like a bunch of gates open on the outside and then there was one gate open on the inside but he was next to freeze and mosman right and he picked it and i'm like thinking to myself i'm like this isn't going to work out good. I'm like, you got two, one amazing starter. And I'm like, it doesn't even matter the jump he's going to get. He's going to get sound. So sure. Yeah. Sure as heck. He got pinched off. Right. On the start. I was like, ah, all right. right. Well, yeah. well, and we're not doing that again. You know, and, but that's, that's, that's one of the things that, that, you know, I just remember I, I had never seen anybody really work on stars until I was with Ryan. Right. Yeah. Like it was always just like, I mean, Casey could pound motos and he yeah. was fast. I mean, you brought Casey anywhere local, and you can guarantee he was going to be up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, when we were doing the Bounty Hunters or Top Guns at the time in Los Banos, you know, it was, you know, it was always yeah. starts. There, there was only one guy who could come from the back, and that was always Rusty Holland, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, but everybody else, it had to be starts. It had to be starts. And, and, you know, the best I ever saw you ride is when your rear brake wasn't working. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 it's just like... That I was, stuck with me forever. You yeah. know how much no rear brake practice I yeah. do? Because I always think about that ra- that race when that was like my best night. I think I won all the races yeah. that night. Yeah, you blew and everybody like, away. I remember Matt coming up to me being like, dude, you're ripping. What, yeah. what is going on? I'm like, I lost my rear brake. <laughs> and then I remember my dad was like, well, let's take the rear brake off the other bike. I'm like, no, leave it off. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I've never rode that good. Well, no. we put it on and the night still went good. Right. That it's funny. Cause I always think about like, okay, why am I riding bad? And I'm thinking to myself, dude, get off the rear brake. Right. You know, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but cause it kills your momentum. Right. You know, if you ride it too far into the corner, that's roll speed. Right. And you think about the powers driven to the rear wheel. If your foot's on the rear brake. Right. Well, then the rear wheel's not spinning, right? right? So you're killing your roll speed. There's no momentum. If you have your foot on the rear brake halfway through the corner, you're not going forward. Right, right. And that was, I, I remember it because it was, I was working for Daniel at the time and, you know, Eric McCrumman was yeah. waxing everybody and uh, we were sitting there and it was a very competitive year. I remember everybody was super close. Oh, that was fun. And it was it was one of those times where I was just, you know, we it was it was always, 
you were always right there. You were always yeah. top three, but it was just like McCrumman always just had that little bit yeah. on you. And I remember watching practice going like, I looked over at Daniel and I'm like, nobody's beating Billy tonight. <laughs> and I was like, and I, I've seen you race forever, yeah. right? Yeah. You're probably forever. And I've seen you race Los Banos a million yeah. times. And I was just like blown away. I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> nobody's beating Billy tonight. And I told him, I was like, Billy's winning tonight. I was like, you guys aren't going to beat him for whatever reason. He is flying. And that's when he came off the track. I was like, dude, what's going on? Like, where did this come yeah. from? You're like, I have no brakes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, practice, uh, no brakes. I guess, yeah. you know, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. I, re- I remember that. And it's, it's funny because I always think about that night. And yeah. I'm like, I wish I could take that night and like put it in a bottle and like just save it for when I want right. to go really fast on the bike. Right. Like just, right. Every, you have those weird nights where like something clicks, you know, and you're just like, dude, I, I don't know. And it's easy too. Right. right? Like when right. you go fast, you're like, dude, it's easy. And then it seems like when you're overthinking how to ride, how to do this, how to do that, you end up going slow. Right. right. Like that night, I remember I was just like feeling good. I was in shape. I was eating healthy. I'd been training. And I'm like, dude, I just feel good. Like, right. And you know, I, you know, and, and that was one of the things that I noticed one of the big eye openers for me when I was working with Casey uh, Henson was his year that he did the, we did the Buku Arena Cross. You know, it was his first year racing against a lot of those yeah. big name guys. And uh, at first, you know, he came in and he didn't qualify for the first, you know, the first mains, the first weekend. And I was just like, you know, building weekend. Next weekend, he qualified for one out of two. And then the next weekend after that, he qualified for both. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he went from just qualifying to where like he was top ten, and I yeah. and like I can remember when we, you know halfway through the season when Casey was good, I would look at our you know our motos mm-hmm. and I'd be like, oh yeah, Casey's got those dudes beat, yeah. you know, oh yeah, we're we're in a good heat, like, and I knew he would qualify right out of the heat, yeah, and it was so weird, like when you get that confidence level, yeah, and you're riding really good. That that's a huge thing too, and I even for me as the mechanic, I remember I'm like, oh yeah, Casey, Casey's got it in this one. You just need to know you belong, and that's right. what I was telling Colby Cop because he was so close to making the main events, and I'm like, dude, once you make one main event, I guarantee you, you'll make everyone there on after, unless something fluke happens. Right. Because I'm like, you get the confidence, and you know where you're supposed to be. That's like in the arena cross, right? Like I started off, I didn't make a couple mains, then I made a main, then I made every single main from right. there on out, and like you know, I was beating guys on factory teams. Right. You know, you know I was I had support from MDK, but I was beating, right really good guys at the time you know and it's like because i knew that's where i was supposed to be i'm right. like okay i'm in fifth they take four i'm passing i don't care who that is in front of me right that's how who i got to get to qualify so right. i would get by him you know? right and that's just what you got to do and again that comes down to mindset and i think you know yeah being in shape is huge obviously and you know having good equipment is huge but bikes nowadays nowadays are so good stock yeah you just that you know as long as you get a good suspension guy then you know you can the, the bikes you, you have a lot there uh you don't have to worry about the 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 death bog that yeah. plagued Honda and everybody yeah. for so long in the car. The 06 Honda? Yeah, yeah that when they did the, you know, the dual pipes and, yeah. but they had that death bog, you know, and now at every, all the fuel injection and stuff, um, you, know. you, you get, you get a pretty good solid, you know, bike right out of the box. Uh, the, the biggest thing is, is your fitness, your mindset, your starts. Again, yeah. I'll, I'll say starts all day long because when you get starts and you're used to getting starts and you're used to being up there, you know, even if you, you start off first, mm-hmm. you know, and you do it for one lap, the next time you do it for two laps, it's yep. you're still building and you're still gaining there. And then people are automatically looking at you because they're like, yeah. he's up front. He just maybe he needs a better bike, you know, and, and, it, and then if you could put in some really good showings and Daniel was a perfect example of that, you know, the year that he rode for. You know the factory connection team that he, yeah. you know, he got to do a fill in for that. Oh that, yeah, yeah. That year he was riding super well, and you know he got to, he got to go ride for factory connection, and and he ended up ninth overall in the in the in the series, and he had a he had a great year, you know. And sometimes that's all it takes is that mm-hmm. little that little breakout, you know. And and but uh, Daniel is also super naturally talented. He yeah. did a lot of supercross, yeah. lots of arena cross. He's very good at riding that technical stuff. And, and like you said, he's little, so he gets yeah. good starts. And, uh, as long, you know, you put him on good equipment and he rides good. Uh, and I, I think that can hold true for anybody who holds that mindset that if all you, if you really want to make it, you can do it. As long as you have the proper backing from family and friends, you surround yourself with good people and you focus on the on on the real stuff and you go to the real races and you race the fastest guys in our area you know you you make your trips down to la and you race against those fast kids in la you go to the you know you go to the amateur nationals and just get smoked going like oh my god how is that guy a b rider you know because you know he'll beat all the pros around my area but 
that's where you got to be and you yeah. can't be afraid of that and you can't let you can't worry about your results to to that when you, you can't you can't go to those races and expect to be number one against every kid in that from the country I it's was almost like, like you get sucked into it right like you right. go to the race and you go to the first one and you just get smoked and then you're like all right i gotta do and you get you get so pissed off and right. fired up as it were if you're racing local races you're kicking everybody's butt every week right you're like you're not worried about it right, right. but then when you get your butt kicked and you think about it all week, and it just eats at you, eats at you, and you're like, next time I go, I'm going to do better. I'm right. going to five places better. I'm going to right. ten places better. And then you eventually just start working your way right. up, right? And then pretty soon, it's, you're, you belong, right? Right. You're like, I'm, then you're winning. And you're right. Like, and then, oh, you're on, then you're getting looked at by teams, and then you're getting help, and yep. then that's what boosts you into your spot. I mean, yeah, every, every few years, somebody comes out of the woodwork that's like, oh, my gosh, who is that guy? Yeah. And then they get, you know, like... And then they get a, a ride, and then all of a sudden they're a top rider, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's there, but it's those guys putting in that work to get there to show everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care if you don't know who, what my name is, but I'm going to come out here and, and race and show you what I got. And, you know, natural talent's only going to take you so far. Oh, yeah. We've seen that with a lot of people yeah. in the sport, right? Yeah. Like, I remember my dad always said, he's like, natural talent only goes so far. Because there was kids I grew up with that would kick my butt. And he's like... Right. Yeah, but they're not working at it like you right. are, and you know, and then all of a sudden they disappear. Right. right? Well, do you, do you remember that uh, that Salinas uh, bounty hunter that we went to, and you know, Evan Lawford showed up, and that's when he was writing oh, for yeah. ECC. And I remember we were sitting there, me, you, and your dad were talking, and he he walked up and. And he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to win. I remember that. And man. then we're like, dude, whatever. Because right? I was like the same speed right. as Evan. We've been racing the B class together. And, I, you know, I beat Evan a couple times. And, right. You know, he beat me more often than I beat him. But I'm like, you're going to win? And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is more like super crossy. This is more my style, yeah. right? You're like, good luck, dude. And then Evan straight up beat everybody, every moto. <laughs> and smoked beat Rusty. And I yeah. was like, and Rusty was the man. Like, yeah. dude, nobody beat Rusty. And I'm like. Dude, and, and just the confidence he came up yeah. with when he's like, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm going to win. I'm going to win tonight. Yeah. I, I, dude, I remember that like it was yesterday. He right? came up and he just told me and my dad, and my dad looks at me and he goes, thinks he's going to win tonight. Yeah. And then, man, where we proved it. Yeah, oh, dude, he made us, everybody. yeah, dude, he killed everybody. Yeah. You know, and it was, and I was just like, oh my God, like, yeah. where, where did he get that speed? But he had, he, he, he spent a lot of time at, at where he needed to be. He mm -hmm. got picked up by ECC Suzuki. Yep. So he had good bikes and he, he was on a good training regimen and he was, dude, he was flying. And I was just like, oh, yep, he won. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that's so much of that big thing is, is you, you could be cocky, right? But you have to back that up yeah. or you could be humble and just get better. Yeah. Right. And then you, you show up to the races and you, just be like, oh yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. We'll see how it goes tonight, and then you blow everybody away, and then you're just like, oh okay, like. Because I think Evan went on to get the Horizon Award, didn't he? I uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised the way he was. Loretta's, right. I think he went to Loretta's and just waxed everybody, and then I think he had a problem with his shoulder or wrist or something, right. and that was kind of the end of it. He right. he got hurt because he did a couple nationals. Yeah, and then it was just like he was gone. But I think it was an injury. It was either his wrist or his oh, shoulder yeah. or something. But yeah, I mean, the guy was so confident in his ability, and he and he proved it. Uh, but I think yeah, I've never had that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna smoke it right. Here, yeah. like, okay, let's just try to get out safely. Yeah. And uh, if I beat a few guys, great. Yeah, you know, and uh, but I I think one of the 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 big things is is that. Uh, is just between the you know between the two things is when you're expected to you know you you put a lot of expectation on yourself to be fast young mm -hmm. right because like that's otherwise you're old for the sport yeah i mean 30 years old you're 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 you shouldn't be racing anymore you yeah. know and uh you know but there was you just it's putting your head down while you're young mm -hmm. you know picking that time to be at the track practicing yeah and riding and, and getting better to, to turn pro and to, and to put yourself on a strict diet and a strict workout regimen. And and there's a ton of guys out there now that, that could really put you in good shape to do this because, you know, it's, there's yeah. no there's no secrets anymore, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of resources that right. didn't exist. Like, I remember trying to figure out how to train when I was growing up, and I was just in no man's land. Right. Like, I would just train myself. We had Gary Simmix right. videos. Yeah, we you had, know, you know that, like, you had to buy them, right, for, like, 50 bucks a video right. or whatever they were at the time and like nobody had anything and like, right and they were great you know yeah. they, they 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 taught you a lot of good technique but you didn't have you didn't have somebody who really understood training like they do nowadays the off the bike training. right that, the that's, off the bike that's stuff. where i went wrong was i was 
okay, my heart rate's at 180 when I race. Well, then I'm going to go run five miles with my heart rate at 180, and then I would go out the next weekend and just be destroyed. Right. And, and then my endurance will go backwards, backwards, backwards every time. So it's right. like there's all the resources. Like, I wish I had those resources growing up, but would I have utilized them as a kid, right? Like, right. you know, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, you think you know everything. So you got to be open minded and, and utilize the stuff that's out there. But the problem nowadays, though, is you got to filter through. There's some right. good information, there's some bad information. You know, get it from sources that you trust and know and that are proven. Right. You know, don't take it, you know, you're not going to go hire a uh, strongman comp competitor, right? Right, right. To right. train you for motocross. That just, no, it doesn't work like right. that. And, you know, he's probably, that strongman competitor is going to give you his way to get fast on a dirt bike and it may not be the right program for you to be Right, on. yeah. And, you know, and that and that's one of the things where, where Ryan was so good is he was able to just... You know, and I think he was getting a little bit of help from a trainer when I was working from him. I think yeah. it was Shannon Nyday at the time. Yeah, that's the, the guy, guy that of, made him do the corner drills. And yeah. Stuff. Was talking about that on the... Yeah, so, and I remember, you know, Ryan would always, whenever he'd set up his bike, he'd always do the 10, 10 circles one way, 10 circles the other way, and he always had his little lever thing that he did, you know? Yeah. But it was just like... That was right when road biking first kind of started coming into into motocross, and I, I remember it was it was big, but it was not like everybody was doing yeah. it, you know. And uh, he started really picking up on that because he was a big Lance Armstrong fan, and and he got he got big into the road biking, and you know Michael Young was big into it, and and uh, you know uh, they would go on rides all the time down in yeah. Marietta and those places like that, and that's where you'd see all those guys out there doing, you know, Ryan Morris and all those mm -hmm. guys were out there and. And, uh, you know, they're, they were all, they were all out there pushing each other. And I just think when you put yourself around guys like that all the time that yeah. you're expected to be there and you expect yourself to be there. And that's one of the things where you, you can't really be private with your training. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta take it out and you gotta, you gotta show everybody what you got. You know, you can't, you know, nothing's top secret anymore. You well, know, because then somebody might see something with your program that right. they're like, Hey, you're not doing the right thing, right? Like you may be doing nine things right nine out of ten but right. one thing you're doing is making you go backwards and so it's always good to talk to other people about yeah. their kind of training what they're doing how they're doing it you know and then you guys can try to get on the right path because if you're like you know keep it in a closet then you might not be doing the right stuff right. for yourself right and, I, and a lot of people are a lot of people aren't doing the right stuff for themselves they're they're you know they're they got the work ethic and the the willpower to go train but they're they're hurting themselves actually. right they got to do the right things right and and i think that's where you know getting at least getting around a, a trainer who you know who went to school for that stuff or who really understands that kind of thing at least point you in the right direction yeah. to say am i burning myself out or am i actually like making myself better because you could go out and ride 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 and then obviously that's going to be really good but there's there's other stuff you need to be doing off the bike to to, to really get you in in check and um i think those top level guys that's all that's that's mm -hmm. their life that's what they do they they eat right they train every day there's you know there's no days off it's every day to get better and you got to be willing to step up to that because there are people who are doing that and so if, no taco tuesday no nah, well I was, maybe <laughs> i don't know for as a mechanic taco <laughs> yeah, tuesday yeah. always went through i was gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah it's you know and and that's another thing you know is just is you you just got to put yourself out there yeah so it, it's it's one of the thi one of the things that I the biggest thing that I saw you know granted this was you know some time ago, but uh, whenever you you know you you got to focus on yourself and and focus on your results and every weekend if you're not if you're just going to the races to just go, then you're not doing yourself any favors. Mm -hmm. I mean you got to be out there like you know, you know that's when we see all our buddies at the yeah. track and you want to go hang out with them. It's like well. We didn't do that. We, you know, we were at the track, like, yeah. how can we make the bike better? Where am I losing time? Where, you know, and it's, and yeah. it's having that. And it's, and it's when you're at the track, you're at work, you know, that's your job. If that's what you want to do is be a pro, you know, top level supercross motocross rider. Do you think those guys made it pro and then like, oh, I'm pro now. So I just yeah. get to ride factory. Like, no, no. it's an everyday thing. And like they say races aren't one on the weekend, right? No, they're, yeah. they're not. They're and it, the yeah. And and if you're not going to do yeah. it, then somebody else will, and mm -hmm. somebody else will put in that time. And, and, if, and you're out, if you're out kicking back, oh, hey, it's Thursday night. I'm going right. to go out with my buddies, and you know, I just turned 21, so we're going to go have some beers. Well, there's yeah. somebody that isn't doing that once a week, every week, and you know, they're going to probably progress a little better because right. the damage you're doing to your body is going to take several days to get catch right. back up from. Right, so it's right. like. You're in a different era now with the sport than what we grew up in in the 90s when it was, you know, party time in the 90s, 2000s, it started to change, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when 
when you started getting guys like you know Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed and those guys in there, they took training to a whole new level, and they brought the the whole motocross world to a whole, mm-hmm. whole new level, and that's where it is now. So why so they, why they have to go and do that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean that's that's where you are. And like there's and there's a lot less yeah. teams nowadays, and there's a lot less spots that you're you know you're trying to get into. And for you, you got to show up every weekend. You got to put in your time, and you got to show these people that you mean business. But you also, you also have to, you have to put it. You just have, you have to show up all the time, twenty four seven. Nothing but dirt bikes. Nothing but moto. And you know, you you when you get to retire at mm-hmm. thirty years old, sure. you know, then yeah. that's when you get to go out and have fun and, and you do your things. But look at him; he's still coming back. Yeah, and, he's, <laughs> and he's still going to love it, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Motocross yeah. is a very it's a, as you've seen with me; it's a very hard sport to give up. You yeah, know, no matter what it does to you, you're always coming back. To yeah, it. it's an, and especially you know, and the one thing that was that I've always said that was the biggest thing for you was you were just always right at that cusp. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like that year that you had that ride on Riley MX, I thought, finally, Billy's got it. Like, oh, yeah. here it comes, dude. And then you and I broke, broke my fever. fever. <laughs> yeah. That was it. I'm like, you know, God was telling me I, sh- I should go a different yeah, route, but I guess, you know. But you know, and it's, but it's, yeah, I mean, what? how old were you at the time? 25, 26? 20, 23, I think. Right? So, yeah. like, you were already, you know. 25? No, I think I was 20, 24, 24, I think. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah. you were already an old man in the sport. You know yeah, what I mean? I was, I was already old. I remember doing the Buku Arena Cross, and I was 23, and I felt like I was old. Right, I yeah. I remember, like, when when I uh, we did a, the awards banquet, you know, and I got my, like, number nine plaque, and I'm like, oh, I was all stoked, you know, and I was talking like I was 40 years old. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, I gave it up, and I came back, and then you know, now I'm 37. I'm like, dude, I was so, so young, young, right? right? And, it, and, it, and it's, but, but that's the reality of the sport yeah. is it's a young man's sport, and... You better put in your you better put in your work. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up. Thanks, Matt Presser, for uh, coming and talking with me, and it was uh, very informational. I yeah. do appreciate it, and uh, good luck in your career. Be safe out there. And Thank you. All right. Uh-